Concord can whisk you over to New York in just three hours. Now, because they're five or so hours behind our time in the Big Apple, that actually means, Jenny, I think I'm right in saying that you arrive before you leave. See what I mean? Yeah, and, and you might even pass yourself on the way back. It's spooky, isn't it? It really is. It really is. Anyway, this year, Concord celebrates 20 successful years in commercial service, and she's still flying strong, still a world beater. We've had a letter from one of our regular viewers, Mr. Dilpesh Kalyanji, who's with us tonight. He wants to know how does Concord do it and keep on doing it? Well, like this. Speedboat Concord, first take off on my two two one. Three, two, one, now. You only have to look at Concord to know that it's a very special aircraft. It can fly at 1,400 miles an hour. That's as fast as a rifle bullet. And it reaches that speed 11 miles above the surface of the Earth, on the very edge of space. It's the fruit of a unique collaboration. In 1962, Britain and France agreed to develop the fastest passenger plane ever. The trouble was that the project was so novel that we kept uncovering new problems, new information, new things that involve changes and every time we had to rewrite these enormously complicated programs. We had a wonderful system that whereas we had two design teams we actually had people paired off so that there was a partner from the French and British side in every project. Creating a passenger plane that would reliably fly long distances at twice the speed of sound set enormous challenges to a team of over 2,000 technicians and engineers. Beating those challenges would take seven years and cost a staggering two billion pounds. But by 1969, the effort had paid off. Concorde was ready for her maiden flight. Any first flight is a bit of tension. It's fairly dramatic. But Concorde was so novel, and yes, it was quite a spectacular and moving event. 25 years on, a flight in Concorde is still a spectacular event, and it still represents the cutting edge in the technology of supersonic travel. It starts with the unique visor. Shortly after takeoff, this slides up to provide the perfect streamlining Concorde will need to travel at Mach 2, twice the speed of sound. But the next challenge is to get the plane up to that extraordinary speed. So how do they do that? To do that, we use an afterburner system. This is a system where we introduce extra fuel into the exhaust of the engine, ignite it, accelerate it to give us the extra thrust we need to take us to Mach 2. In all, it's nearly one extra engine. And Concorde's unique engines keep it cruising at that incredible speed. How? Well, a conventional jet engine works by compressing the incoming air, mixing it with fuel, igniting it, then blasting it out of the back. But at 1,400 miles an hour, the air is coming in too fast for conventional engines to cope. We have to slow the air down from 1,400 miles an hour to 500 miles an hour. We do that with an intake system that changes shape. That creates invisible barriers to shock waves across the intake. The air passing through it slows down from 1,400 miles an hour to 500 miles an hour. And that fact, compressed air, is ideal for our engine. These engines allow Concorde to use only about 80 tonnes of fuel to cross the Atlantic. But supersonic speed creates special balance and control problems. Imagine my hand is the aeroplane. If the aeroplane goes faster and faster, so the point where the air pressure acts moves rearwards. So in order to keep the aeroplane in perfect balance and trim, we move literally tons of fuel from the front of the aeroplane to the back. Concorde is packed with fuel tanks, even in its wings, which left little room for all the bits and pieces which normally live there. So they had to design a revolutionary new wing. The shape of Concorde's wing is very important. A jumbo has a wing where you can alter the shape by using flaps on the back of the wing, big pieces of metal that can move up and down. Concorde hasn't got that ability. We have twists and curves which allow us to fly both slowly and very fast. It lands like this at a high angle so that the wings can create extra lift at low speed. But at high speed, the air flows over the front of the wings with the minimum of resistance. 
From nose to tail, the plane's been built to minimize air resistance. It's so narrow it can only squeeze in a hundred travelers, but that's the final price of supersonic speed. At 11 miles up, the atmosphere is thin, but Concorde travels so fast, even this thin air doesn't have time to flow out of the way. So the plane batters its way through, causing enormous friction and heat. Even though the air outside the plane is at minus 65 degrees, the nose of Concorde reaches 127 degrees, hotter than boiling water. First thing that was done was that the aeroplane was painted in special white paint in order to reflect as much heat as possible. It is built from a very special aluminium alloy and the designers were able to calculate precisely how much the aeroplane would expand in supersonic flight. The heat screen, or visor as we call it, is made from very special laminated glass which is almost two inches thick and that protects us from the very high temperatures at these altitudes. In fact, windows, door handles and other parts of the plane are actually hot to the touch during flight and as metal expands at high temperatures, Concorde actually gets about six inches longer during its journey. Before takeoff, there was no gap in this instrument panel. During the flight, you can put your hand in it. Finally, it's time for touchdown, but Concorde's famous nose would be difficult to see past when landing. Of course, that problem's easily solved. The nose and visor are lowered. Ken, nose and visor down, please. This allows us to see very clearly. And despite the high angle of the aeroplane and the fact that we're 40 feet above the runway when we touch down, we can see to put the aeroplane down smoothly. I don't think anybody really looks at Concorde flying over without getting a thrill. Certainly I do. Uh, much of my lifetime was spent working on the aeroplane. I know how much effort and ingenuity went into it from thousands of people. It really is a flying marvel. Concorde will fly on into the next century, and we will continue to marvel at this queen of the sky.